It is not, uh, it is not generally speaking, unruly. Watching media coverage of recent protests, I noticed something odd. The protests were mostly peaceful. Reporters kept saying protests were mostly peaceful. Even with fires burning, CNN put peaceful on the screen. We've seen billions and billions of dollars in damage to cities. Joe Concha covers media for The Hill. He says journalism is now opinion-based. The pictures tell the story, yet you have news organizations saying, this isn't that bad. Is he right? In this video, we look at five examples, starting with those mostly peaceful protests. CNN said, look, a new report says 93% were peaceful. A cartoonist mocked that with a mostly floating ship and a mostly flying plane. On Twitter, someone named Still Like Beer wrote, 93% of beer is non-alcoholic, so I guess I'm okay to drive. But there were more than 10,000 demonstrations, and most were peaceful. Most were, but when people start dying and when people start losing their businesses, that's your story. You'd think the CNN folks would be embarrassed just looking at the monitor. Multiple locations that have been burning. Ratings have never been better for CNN. But they aren't just chasing the numbers. Most of the people who work there consider themselves journalists and try to get it right. I don't know if I agree with that, John. I, I think that more and more journalists are playing to a crowd. They're telling them what they want to hear. What they want to hear? Well, then CNN must believe its viewers want to hear more and more about how horrible President Trump is. Trump's truly jaw-dropping reaction to the rising U.S. coronavirus death toll. This is bias example two. Twist statistics to make Trump look even worse. CNN pointed out that although Trump said the U.S. did the most COVID tests per capita, South Korea and Italy tested many times more. CNN correctly adjusted for population. Yet to make Trump look worse, the same day, CNN stopped adjusting for population to repeatedly say the U.S. has the most confirmed coronavirus cases of any country in the world. That's on Trump. In truth, many countries had more per person, but CNN wanted to lecture the president. You serve us. We have the most cases in the world. Only if you suddenly drop the per capita. Per capita only applies when the argument is bad for Trump. It's blatantly obvious. We asked CNN if they consider their coverage objective. They didn't respond. Example three, fact check Republicans mostly. At the DNC, they didn't fact check Joe Biden in real time. But just in time for President Trump's acceptance speech a week later, they debuted a fact checking Chiron to run during Trump's speech but there's a reason they don't fact check Democrats, says Chris Cuomo. They are not lying the way Trump does. Children are torn from their families and thrown into cages. Actually, the AP and BBC found plenty that needed checking, like Michelle Obama not mentioning that those cages began under her husband's administration. Example four, overtly try to help Biden. CNN contributor Van Jones made it clear that it's CNN. We were prepared for it to be a terrible speech. As long as he didn't embarrass himself, we were going to come out here and praise it. So that's all you need to know. Maybe that's more honest than what we used to have. When I was working at ABC, everybody pretended to be down the middle, but they were really mostly on the left. At least now you know what you get. CNN's primetime lineup. Anderson Cooper, Chris Cuomo, Don Lemon all have the title of anchor not opinion maker. Fox News Media. Fox calls its primetime anchors opinion hosts. They are biased. Joe Biden even stated, the police, you ready for this, have become the enemy. Actually, Biden just said this. Last thing you need is an up-armored Humvee coming into a neighborhood. They become the enemy. The opinion people, I give them almost a free ride because, quite frankly, that's what they're paid to do. Example five, asking candidates very different questions. Biden gets softballs. He just got one that said, this story in The Atlantic about Donald Trump calling fallen military members losers and suckers. What does it tell you about President Trump's soul? That was an actual question during a press conference. It's not even softball, John. It's T-ball, except when you put a beach ball on the T. Meanwhile, Trump's asked. After three and a half years, do you regret it all? All the lying you've done to the American people. On all the what? All the lying, all the dishonesties. It's clear that many reporters don't like Trump or even Republicans. 
Last election, 96% of journalists' political donations went to Hillary. Why aren't I 50 points ahead, you might ask? Why do so many journalists favor Democrats? John, I think it's because most of our national media are in two cities, New York and Washington. When you're surrounded by everybody else in a city and in a newsroom that goes the other way, it's almost impossible not to start to conform and go in that direction. The Hill, where Concha works, generally ranks in the middle when people do media bias comparisons. Still, I can imagine people watching this video saying, oh, Stossel, you're just interviewing this right winger. He doesn't <laughs> criticize the right wing media. And I try to be objective. I swear to you, I do. I look at example after example, and it seems to be only from the left directed at the right in terms of media coverage. And it, it's just so apparent. I hope you learned something from these videos. We work hard to give you a perspective you don't get elsewhere. Please help us make more. Press that button.